Hello, welcome to this session of the University of Nicosia um, series on, um, on issues re related to health. My name is Shabula Kobria and uh, I'm a nurse lecturer at the university and I'm going to share with you uh, something which is very important for us as um, people, as citizens, as, uh, as human beings. Uh, something that it affects um, not just our own country but the whole world, which are the issues of, glo of global emerging um, um, health issues. Uh, the aim of this um, presentation would be to discuss globalization, global issues and global health and how these affect the role of nurses, because nurses um, are one of the most important um, uh, kind of healthcare workers who are constantly um, on, uh, you know, alert in order to ensure that, uh, you know, the patients that they are under their care are well, but also they are, uh, their role is extending outside of hospital in relation to the public health and prevention of disease. To discuss emerging major global health issues, to explore the most relevant issues to nursing and health promotion, and also to identify the global health issues and gain a, bro um, a broader understanding of how connected we are in today's world. Um, the, uh, according to WHO, the world is facing plethora of health challenges. And these particular challenges actually range from vaccine uh, preventable diseases such as measles and diphtheria, which uh, also increase of uh, drug resistant pathogens, increase of obesity and physical inactivity, especially among the young and um, among the young and the uh, and the uh, uh, older people, the health impacts of environmental pollution and climate changes, as well as humanitarian crisis. To tackle all these issues and many more who must collaborate with governments and together with all health professionals to meet global targets in order to improve the life of millions. According to Kaplan and Al, global health issues, they transcend national boundaries. In other words, they are not, uh, they, they are not only concern one single country, they actually concern all, all countries around the world. They cross boundaries. And in order to be able to tackle all these global health issues, which are um, giving us, you know, a, a number of, of health problems, but also are um, increasing, you know, the, the number of people who are to become sick or even die from these diseases uh, as a problem for everybody concerned, including lay people as well as professional. So in order to be able for these issues to be tackled, we need global collaboration in, in, in relation to the response, response to the disease, but also to the uh, response to action, planning in order to try and prevent and find new ways of managing um, uh, uh, these emerging health issues uh, to prevent them through health education and especially in increasing the awareness and uh, uh, increasing also the uh, uh, you know lay people or non-medical people non uh, uh, health professional people uh, um, and sort of knowledge through empowerment in order to be able to um, take charge of, of, their, uh, of their health, but also to be prepared for what might happen, you know, for conditions that might uh, um, appear out of, uh, of nowhere. For example, if we go back to the recent past, the uh, coronavirus, you know, suddenly emerged on us, uh, in, and it had, um, had a great impact on the life of everybody around the world in a way that it has become a pandemic, an illness that uh, a condition that affected the life and the well-being and, and the daily routine and the daily 
and the daily um, uh, activities of, of living for every single person on this planet. And as a result, we all had to um, uh, uh, take uh, very strict measures in order to stop the coronavirus from spreading and killing uh, more people than it already has done. And of course, the, the last one, but not least, is to care. In other words, we need to have um, personnel who are going to who are going to be appropriately trained in order to be able to care for those who are going to become sick uh, and they're going to need a, a, a constant care um, for recovery or for peaceful death. And of course, this. Um, these particular, uh, you know, issues, these global issues, they reflect the health equity issues among all nations. Health care around the world is a complex and varies according to nations. If we again here stop for a minute and reflect on the health care system that we have in our country, even in our little country in Cyprus or in big countries like the USA or Canada or the UK or other developed country or developing countries, we're going to see that the health system, when they were put into uh, action many years ago, and um, they had different issues to uh, uh, to cope with. For example, um, they had issues in relation to infectious diseases, which today we have managed to tackle with the use of vaccines. When today, one of the biggest problems that we have is non-communicable diseases, such as diabetes, uh, obesity, cancer, AIDS, and, and, and many other uh, diseases that, um, you know, uh, uh, have a, an impact on, on our health uh, every day around the world. And of course, the health system, another issue in relation to the health system and how um, prepared they are to face all these emerging new issues is the um, is the uh, uh, the number of elderly adults who are surviving to great all all age you know 30 years ago people will die in their 40s and their 50s and their 60s today people are going on to live until they're 90 and even hundreds so in a way we have got a lot of elderly adults who need care and we know again from a lot of research that has been done, a person over the age of 65 often faces more than one health problem, um, which of course need to be uh, dealt with uh, uh, in, in relation to medication, uh, hospitalization, expertise, and of course, monies and drugs. Um, the health of the population also can be affected by public health threats or even across the globe. Public health threats, which could be, you know, um, either um, issues in relation to, as I said already, um, communicable and non-communicable diseases. It could be uh, diseases in, in um, conditions in relation to uh, the shifting of population because of um, uh, uh, different kinds of conflicts among the different countries in the world, uh, unemployment, climate changes, and all the issues that I have mentioned earlier on. So the World Health Organization, or WHO, is the organization that is uh, responsible for looking at the health issues around the world. The literature on global health issues uncover numerous concerns. Some of these concerns are global warming and terrorism. And of course, global warming is because we are not looking after our environment. We have actually basically destroyed our environment through pollution and the use of uh, um, atomic energy and you know fires and uh, wars and many other disasters which they have increased the um, the global warming and of course terrorism which of course um, is the various conflicts uh, around the world um, in relation to idealism uh, and uh, religion um, you know uh, power and other issues in relation to um, you know, uh, who is going to be the most powerful um, around the world. Um, 
Another issue is emerging infectious diseases. We already, you know, already gave an example with obviously the coronavirus, which it has been, uh, you know, uh, quite um, uh, catastrophic in in the last uh, few months um, around the world. And as a result, uh, millions of people uh, have got sick from it, and uh, uh, almost half a million of people have died from it, and still. Uh, people are, um, especially in uh, North America and uh, in Asia, uh, are still um, uh, are in the midst of, of the of the pandemic. Uh, another issue, which obviously it's very uh, upsetting and very degrading for the human race, is human trafficking. When um, people are actually trafficking either women or children, or let's uh, privileged people uh, in 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 the um, hope of gaining money, uh, regardless of the um, pain and the human degradation that they might cause to the people involved. Um, another issue, which obviously has been a problem for a long time, is maternal and newborn health, especially in the developed countries, um, where uh, you know. Uh, women are giving birth to low birth babies, uh, and as a result, um, the babies um, would have, they would have high incidence or infant death, um, and and of course this increases the uh, the burden on the um, uh, on on uh, you know on on having new people to replace. You know the ones who are out of the um, uh, of the work uh, place. Uh, for example, as I said earlier on, we have got a very big number of elderly people who are surviving to great um, um, uh, to great old age, and this is wonderful. And this is because we have managed to tackle a lot of the diseases. We have increased, um, you know, hygienic um, uh, hygienic care. We have increased. Uh, uh, we, we have got safety of water, we have uh, tackled many illnesses which in the past um, might have caused people to die in a very young age. Um, another thing is technology, is medication, is medical knowledge, and of course is nursing care and uh, of these people and prevention of disease. So all these things, it means that we have got um, a large number of, of um, uh, older people surviving, um, with the out of the working arena, so that they need more care, they need more drugs, they need more um, looking after. But if you have a high incidence on infant death, it means you won't have a um, new life to replace all these early people who, who are um, now enjoying a, a great old age, but they're unable to uh, work and offer a um, you know, uh, uh, it, it, to the economy uh, of, 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 of the uh, different countries. Um, nurses, as I already said to you before, you know, they play a very important role in the life and, and the prevention of disease of, of, of nations. First of all, because they are the only healthcare professional who actually uh, spends most of her or his working life with uh, patients 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days um, a year, um, being at the uh, bedside of patients, either in hospital, either in, or in the community, uh, or in the home, um, or in different institutions where patients uh, or clients who have care needs um, are being um, uh, looked after. Um, so nurses potentially can impact on these very prominent concerns. However, unfortunately, there is some mass distribution of health, um, healthcare workers around the world. And as a result of the more affluent countries, such as uh, European countries, the USA, Canada, and, and Japan, and other countries who are rich, um, who are able to attract doctors and nurses out of the 
poorer countries due to the um, higher salaries, better con working conditions, uh, better educational and, and professional opportunities, and, um, and also because in the countries that these nurses and doctors come from, they have got poor infrastructure which uh, somehow make their uh, work in life difficult. And, and of course, as a, as a result of this um, um, malt distribution, but also because of the of the movement of all these healthcare professionals from one uh, a country and mostly from their uh, native country to another, um, impact on the efforts to prevent um, the emerging global health issues and um, the care of patients, families, and communities, which um, you know, and, and the risks which they are affected by all these um, issues mentioned before. Um, the, uh, the WHO has already mentioned this before, um, has, has great health challenges. For example, epidemics of vaccine preventable diseases like measles and diphtheria. One of the issues here, because of the various conflicts around the world, people are moving from one place to the next and thus and not being able to um, get uh, to have a stable uh, health care system where they could be uh, they have their children or themselves vaccinated and thus preventing all these uh, preventable vaccine preventable diseases and as a result and um, in the recent past uh, uh, a lot of uh, diseases which um, they have died many many years ago because of vaccine they seem to be um, you know, lifting their ugly head again, um, such as measles and um, and uh, poliomyelitis and uh, other um, uh, preventable uh, diseases. Also, um, there is uh, somehow uh, among the young parents this um, new sort of philosophy where they do not want to uh, vaccine their to vaccinate their children because they believe that um, it's unethical, it's unfair to inject their child with a dead virus in order to boost up their um, uh, uh, their um, uh, immunity, and having as an excuse that all these diseases um, are not really a problem anymore. Forgetting that the reason we don't have these diseases today is because children and adults over the years they have been vaccinated in order to stop these diseases from um, killing off um, people um, either because of the disease itself or from the side effects or the complications of the disease. Some other issues um, which are very important and we need to be aware of, especially you know, for um, everybody, and uh, is the use of antibiotics. Unfortunately, you know, um, people insist and they will go to their doctor when they have a cold or when they have, um, you know, a flu to have a, a antibiotics for it. And as a result, you know, the, we have got this multiple resistant antibiotics um, uh, disease pathogen uh, resisted to many antibiotics because um, we take them too often when they are necessary. The majority of colds usually are caused by viruses, not by bacteria. And of course, antibiotics are usually given in order to kill bacteria. Um, also, uh, another issue in relation to this uh, black resistant pathogen is that um, usually uh, when a patient is prescribed a medication, they do not finish the regime that the doctors um, prescribe for them. They will take it for a couple of days because they feel better. They think that that's it, it's finished, the, the disease, the, the, the um, uh, infection is gone and they stop taking it. Uh, and as a result of it, again, a few days later, the, the, uh, the person will start feeling unwell again because the bacteria that causes the infection they, got, they started to, um, uh, to be resistant to the antibiotic they've given. Um, another issue which um, 
it's, it's very important for us to uh, take notice of is growing rates of obesity and physical inactivity, especially amongst young people and even um, young children. We have children who can develop uh, diabetes type 2 as young as 12 because of obesity and inactivity. The, the rise of, um, of computers and computer games uh, on all the other technological uh, preparation um, have stopped children from running around and playing out outside uh, where they could, um, you know, um, exercise and spend their energy. And also um, the working mothers um, you know, uh, has increased um, in, in, you know, in today's society because of um, uh, economic, obviously, factors. Um, one parent is not enough to uh, earn enough money for the keep of the family. So most women today, they will go outside to, to work. As a result, sometimes the children um, won't have prepared have a prepared food on the table and they would have uh, fast food or take away or perhaps, uh, you know, uh, uh, have crisps and, and other, um, you know, uh, food which um, will increase the risk of becoming obese. And, uh, and on top of that, with the inactivity that we already talked about, um, that increases the risk of even of young children becoming diabetic um, at a very young age. Obviously, inactivity and obesity would affect, you know, um, you know, older adults as well, where you have an increase, and um, you know, um, of um, diabetes type two as well as cardiovascular disease, and um, which, um, you know, um, eventually will end up the patient um, dying from a, a heart attack. Um, also, other issues which are, uh, are very important uh, to tackle is multiple humanitarian crises, for example, natural disasters, man-made disasters or country emergencies, conflicts, epidemics, pandemics, and many others, which obviously, um, you know, are increasing the risk of, um, of, global, of, of, of global health challenges. Um, now, let's have a look at the role of nursing now. Nurses and nursing profession have the opportunity to positively impact on global health issues through various settings. In other words, they could influence nurses and the nursing profession as a general. They could influence um, governments uh, in order to um, formulate policies which are going to um, examine those issues that we talked about in relation to obesity, in relation to emerging new diseases, to um, uh, uh, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, and, uh, and, other, vi and, and, other, uh, and other issues in order to ensure that um, uh, these policies which help the citizens um, to lead a much a healthy life, you know, for example, to create areas where, um, you know, people could walk, children could play, um, and, and, and as a result, that would decrease, you know, um, the, the risk of cardiovascular disease and obesity, lower cholesterol and triglycerides, which obviously um, are some of the factors that would um, uh, uh, increase the risk of developing um, those conditions. Other issues is about um, issues related to public health. Nurses are in the best position in order to promote um, public health and promote um, health education amongst the very young and the very old and, you know, all the stages of, of, of life and, and um, because they have got the opportunity to um, work in hospitals, to work in communities, to um, work in the people's home um, and to be a, to, at schools, um, in, uh, in business, in, in gyms, everywhere where there are um, a big uh, concentration of, of people who are either working, exercising, 
uh, or they are being treated for um, some kind of illnesses. So uh, nurses are, um, you know, one of the best public health promoters that we could um, uh, uh, we could have in in you know in our in our society today. Also, nurses work in academia where they uh, carry out research in order to find new ways of um, preventing disease and caring for people and, and also um, educating uh, new practitioners uh, to um, uncover um, sort of new uh, ways of um, promoting health and, uh, you know, uh, being able to educate the various, um, you know, groups of people and um, uh, and empower citizens with knowledge and uh, uh, in order to um, make decisions about their health and their health and also help them change their healthy behaviors. One of the issues, very important issues in public health it's actually individual behavior. And we're talking about behaviors in relation to eating behaviors. It's about, um, you know, sexual behavior. It's about, um, you know, uh, controlling uh, uh, mental health issues, um, issues in, in relation to eating healthily, exercising, etc. Also clinical care in, in hospitals or in, in, the, in the community, um, as well as taking on leadership roles in order to guide and promote um, and health issues around the globe and, and in, in collaboration with other healthcare professionals as members of multidisciplinary teams um, where uh, together they could work for the better run and the improvement of the health issue around the globe. Um, and of course, um, you know, uh, the other issues that nurses have because of their um, sort of uh, ability to work in so many different settings, they, they are able to promote and, uh, and um, develop various networks where they could tackle the various um, uh, problems that um, the uh, people around the globe are facing today. Now, let's look at its globalization because um, as part of this um, merging issues, globalization plays a very important role. So globalization is a term that we use to describe the increasing economic and social interdependence between countries. In other words, that, um, you know, one country will work with another in order to collaborate in education, in health, in, in uh, prevention of disease, in, uh, uh, in ensuring that um, in, uh, in the safe of the, of the environment, uh, protect the, um, the climate, uh, exchange ideas, technological mitigation, all issues um, uh, that is going to involve um, all healthcare professionals, but also lay people and other um, econom uh, you know, economists and, and other um, uh, professionals. It encompasses um, you know, social, political, economic changes, we already sort of mentioned that. And of course, one of the issues um, which is very important, globalization, we also talk, we talk about um, the, the ability of people to move around the mobility, economic interdependence, and also, um, you know, through electronic um, uh, um, technology, it, you can have sort of um, interconnectedness in order to exchange ideas and somehow minimize distances. Um, in globalization, they, are, uh, they will include two interrelated elements. The opening of international borders to increasingly um, uh, fast flows of goods, um, services, finances, people, and ideas. Changes in institutions and policies at national and international levels that enable or promote 
this particular movement. An example I can give you here that um, it happened in Europe is the free movement of profession of healthcare professionals and and other um, uh, seven professionals um, in in relation to um, cover um, you know the needs that might exist in this particular speciality such as medicine, nursing, midwifery, law, um, accountancy, veterinary, uh, uh, chemists, and, and architecture. Through this um, uh, free uh, movement and, and mobilization um, of, of professionals in Europe, uh, it could be achieved um, by standardizing the education, uh, the education and the training of all seven of all these seven professions, in order to have common goals and common uh, theory and practice, in order to be able to have easily access and um, you know um, of work in in any European country by mutually recognizing their qualifications. And 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 they are um, and they are um, uh, practitioners in order to be able to exchange um, you know uh, personnel ideas to cover shortages of staff and but also to uh, be able to um, gain knowledge from each other as a result of this free movement of these professionals through European Union. Let's have a look now what is global health. Global health is refers to health issues that they are not limited geographically, um, but uh, and one that single countries cannot dress alone. In other words, it means that you know the collaboration of countries between them, they could face the various um, global problems that they might emerge in. In order to help tackle, they tackle, um, you know, similar problems uh, that they might um, uh, emerge. Again, an example I can give you here is the recent again uh, pandemic of um, coronavirus, where um, the uh, uh, all the healthcare professionals um, they will exchange ideas in order to learn from each other. And in, in order to um, be able to stop the spreading of the virus and control and uh, control is you know the health and um, and uh, safeguard the life of um, of people around the world. So um, global health issues are issues which affect um, the health of not one country, but uh, a lot of countries around the world. They are not actually, uh, geographically, they are not limited to one country, but they are um, extended to uh, around the world. Health issues, because they are not sort of limited just to one country or to one state or to one government, in order to be able to tackle them, and be able to um, face them, find new ways of of of, uh, of, uh, of curing them, new ways of caring, new ways of uh, of, of um, uh, new um, new medication. We need to work collectively together in order to address it. And here I've got an example from the. Um, NTB strategy of the Hood 2015, where this policy relies on well-linked international strategies to implement the three pillars of successful intervention in order to be able to stop the TB from becoming even a, a biggest problem that it already is. These three elements, um, that um, the three pillars uh, um, which they require, what what is require um, worldwide, worldwide expertise, partnership in healthcare, social protection, labor, immigration, and justice. So all the countries working together um, in order to tackle the problem of tuberculosis 
and, and stop it from spreading and being able to control it and cure it um, if possible. Some of the crucial roles in global security, which is um, part of the global health, is economies become increasingly globalized and excessive international travel and commerce. Um, as a result of um, globalization and issues around, um, around our health, because of international travel, people travel from one country to the next, and through traveling, they will carry with them, obviously, and um, sometimes their diseases as well. So, as, so in a way, um, that's how often one disease would actually cross the borders of one country to another because of, of all this, um, of, of, the, of the inability and the easiness that we are able to travel and uh, um, from one country to the other and exchange um, uh, trades and, uh, and uh, ideas uh, uh, between the different countries. A crisis of issue in one country can affect and spread to other countries through borders and technology venues. So through traveling, through, um, you know, um, uh, uh, through technology, uh, we can actually spread disease from one country to the next. Some, um, you know, global issues in relation to um, uh, emerging health issues. Um, the rate of death from non-communicable diseases, um, uh, such as heart disease, stroke and injury, is growing. And one, uh, you know, the reasons we already explained them before is to do with the uh, uh, obesity, is to do with uh, inactivity, and with uh, nutrition or not having the right nutrition, lack of knowledge, and the increase of use of fast foods and, uh, and many other issues in, in relation to uh, mechanization of our life, uh, increase of stress, of course, and mental illness, which um, are uh, another cause of, um, of non communicable diseases. On the other hand, the numbers of deaths from infectious diseases such as malaria, tuberculosis, and vaccine vegetable diseases is decreasing. And of course, um, this is called the dual burden of disease. Uh, as a result of this, countries around the world must continue to prevent and control infectious diseases through exchange of ideas, through collaboration, through research, um, through creating new knowledge, uh, as well as addressing the health threats from non-communicable diseases such as heart disease, cancer, and stroke, and of course, environmental health threats. Um, some global issues that we need to um, stop and discuss here because are of very important issue to all healthcare professionals, but especially, um, you know, us, you know, as nurses, emerging infectious diseases, you know, new infectious diseases, non-communicable diseases that we talked about, human trafficking, you know, from, you know, people who uh, do not uh, respect human life and as a result of it, they would trade, um, you know, uh, for the gain of money, um, promising people to, uh, uh, find them jobs and and, uh, and move them from one country to the next, and in the end they ended up um, as, as uh, victims of human trafficking, find themselves as uh, part of um, you know uh, teenager um, uh, prostitution uh, uh, and and other issues uh, around um, you know paid sex. Um, a large migrant movement, which uh, come under two sort of um, issues here. One of them is the uh, immigrants who are leaving their own country because they want to uh, find a better job for themselves and their family. They find, you know, 
the uh, and the other kind of immigrants that we have is the refugees um, where people are um, are pushed to leave their country as a result of conflicts and wars either um, you know uh, as a result of invasion from outside or um, conflicts within um, the uh, the country themselves so uh, as a result um, this um, large migrant movement um, increases and obviously um, the health issue as these populations as they constantly moving from one country to the next they are not in one place for a long time in order to be assessed, in order to be vaccinated, in order to have enough time to be educated in relation to um, prevention of disease. And, and, and of course, uh, another issue here, because of poverty, um, and poverty brings with it inequalities in health, which is a big issue um, in relation to the development of diseases, um, especially among um, you know uh, the developing countries and the very poor, global maternal mortality. You know, still women in the 20th century are still dying during childbirth, and and uh, and of course, as a result of this increase in maternal mortality, is uh, uh, increase on, on babies, uh, infant mortality or babies becoming infant and looking, needing for people to look after them um, as uh, they have lost their mom. And other issues in relation to natural disasters such as earthquakes, tsunamis, floods and armed conflicts. All these issues are some of the issues that uh, um, uh, um, we're going to discuss. So, infectious diseases, we already said, no boundaries. Increase in, of, uh, in humans in the last two decades or threat of increase in the near future. New infections resulting from changes or evolution of existing organisms, you know, uh, SARS, you know, in, in 2013, uh, you know, 2020, it was coronavirus and uh, uh, we had uh, the swine flu uh, and, uh, and the, uh, the uh, bird flu and all the other um, infectious um, sort of diseases which they have been affecting the, uh, the globe over the last few decades. Although known uh, infectious range to new geographic areas or population. Um, Infectious diseases previously are recognized infection appearing in areas undergoing ecologic transformation. Um, old infections re-emerging as a result of antimicrobial resistance in known agents of breakdown in public health measures. Um, antibiotic resistance in one of the biggest public health challenges of our time, already talked about it. Microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi, viruses, and parasites and they change when they are exposed to antimicrobial, antimicrobial drugs and, and as a result they develop the ability to defect the drug and um, that is designed to kill them. So as a result um, those um, infections would perpetuate and antibodies uh, are unable to do anything um, to, uh, to treat them. Um, other um, sort of issues around infectious diseases is and um, we need to be able to quickly recognize and control all the emerging uh, diseases in order to be able to promote health abroad um, to prevent the international spread of disease and also to protect the health of individual countries um, non-communicable diseases um the 21st century um one of the new public health uh, priorities that emerge um, is the non-communicable diseases. And um, one of the issues about of um, non-communicable diseases, such as, for example, uh, cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, stroke, chronic respiratory disease, uh, COPD, and many other, um, you know, autoimmunity 
um, diseases um, have increased, and, and as a result, um, you know, uh, those um, diseases seem to um, increase. Um, sorry, it's it, it spread in in low income countries um, in um, North America and Western Europe. In the old days, um, they thought people who got cardiovascular disease was the rich, the people who had, you know, the edge, um, you know, well, they uh, they smoked, they drank, but today, uh, unfortunately, has uh, spread into low-income countries um, with uh, some disastrous effects. The burden of non communicable diseases, um, which, uh, like, such as, um, cardiovascular diseases and um, all the others we have talked about, um, they affect every single country in the world, whatever they are developing or developed countries. Another issue that um, we already talked a bit about it, it was um, human trafficking, um, which uh, involves acts in recruiting, harboring, transporting, providing or obtaining a person on compelled services on commercial sex acts to the use of force, fraud or coercion. Um, some other issues around um, human trafficking is forced labor when victims are coerced by um, the uh, the traitors of, of human lives through um, under false pretenses in order to give them uh, a better quality of life and a better job with better wages and as a result um, uh, these um, uh, people uh, become victims of forced uh, labor um, you know, uh, as well as um, children who work in Africa, cocoa plantations, children who work in India, children, soldiers, which is very common in India and in Africa. Another uh, form of human trafficking is sex trafficking, where women and children um, are comprised most of the sex trade around the world, but adult men are also forced into sex a trade, sometimes directly and sometimes through forced labor, where they encounter torture and rape. And what really happened to, um, uh, they would sort of promise these people that um, they would take them to another country where they could have a good job, where they could have a better life, where they could be, um, uh, um, uh, gain more money uh, and have a respectful life and of course um, when they get there they are disappointed because um, they are not what is expected and as a result uh, these people uh, become slaves um, of these um, uh, traffickers. Uh, another issue is commercial sex exploitation of children or domestic minor sex trafficking um, which uh, usually are the term used um, when they uh, trafficking um, young children uh, or, or, or underage minors for, for sex. Uh, we already sort of talked about um, the forced um, the people are, are forcibly removed from their country with um, forced promises. And nurses and other healthcare professionals are often the only professionals to interact with people who have experienced human trafficking and who are still being held captive. And their assessment and interview skills can assist in safeguarding those at risk of significant harm. So in other words, nurses and other healthcare professionals, when they come into contact with this people who have been um, removed forcibly from their own country, either for forced labor or for 
sex or other um, uh, other uh, kind of illegal um, uh, action, uh, nurses could easily identify um, these people, and through their assessment, they could help them to um, uh, release them of the uh, of, of of their capture and help them to uh, be able to go back to. Um, normality um, and save them. Um, some other issues that um, it, it, you know we will cover is um, all over the world we have about 250 million international migrants. Um, even in Cyprus, who has a population of less than a million, it's believed that we at least have 250,000. Um, you know, illegal immigrants who, who are searching for work and 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 uh, and a better life, or seeking for asylum in in order to um, uh, find a, a better life uh, from the ones they had in their own country, either because of conflict, or because of poverty, or because of wars or other um, um, safety issues. Um, uh, here, um, I'm just talking a little bit about the migrant movement that by the end of 2015, there were estimated 21 million refugees and 3 million asylum seekers worldwide, 763 million internal migrants. 11% of the world's population, of whom over 40 million were internally displaced persons. In other words, there were people who they were refugees in their own country. They were displaced in their own country because of uh, conflict, because of uh, uh, seeking a better um, uh, quality of life, because of health issues. And, uh, and as a result of um, the current trends around the world, these numbers uh, are going to increase. Um, global maternal uh, mortality, um, every year 100,000 preventable death of women and girls during pregnancy and child care as a result of limited access to health service and resources, especially in poor countries. Childbirth is supposed to be the safer, the safer, it's supposed to be a safe process. Becoming pregnant is something natural. But unfortunately, if we do not have um, access to health services and resources, um, and um, then women's lives still are in danger while they are giving birth to their baby. In 2013, the World Health Organization estimated that 289 thousand women died during pregnancy and childbirth, unnecessary death of these women. And these numbers, if we translate it into maternal mortality ratio or number of maternal deaths per 100,000 live births, uh, it means that 210 deaths per 100 live births. So 210 women died every 100,000 live births for something that is supposed to be natural. But because um, uh, there is no access to health, there is no um, preparation of the woman before she becomes pregnant uh, in relation to having good health in order to be able to carry and the, uh, successfully the 40 weeks of pregnancy, women are still dying during childbirth. Approximately 99% of these maternal deaths were kept in developing countries. In high-income countries, women and girls die at the rate of 14 deaths per 100,000 of live births. And um, according to research done by WHO, the low maternal mortality rate um, um, attributes the low mater uh, maternal mortality rate onto several advantages. Um, increased use of uh, contraception to delay and limit childbearing, access to high quality health care, socioeconomic and political gains of women in areas such as political representation and high education. So um, if those 
um, uh, those conditions um, are increased around the world, uh, uh, fewer women will die during uh, the delivery of their babies. Um, how do we address global issues um, through policy? Um, we already said that nurses and other healthcare professionals should be actively, politically actively, in order to be able to um, influence government and the healthcare system in order to be able to work together and um, collaboratively to um, uh, together uh, to respond to global health issues. Individual countries and regions have their own health priorities and policies. So um, each country around the world, depending from their healthcare system and their healthcare issues, will have their own policies in relation to um, what issues need to be addressed first. However, um, countries also, they need to work together in an international collaboration through exchange of ideas and, and through um, through research, through um, technology, and through exchange of of, uh, of practices, uh, through exchange of healthcare professionals, in order to address the global um, health issues effectively. Uh, the nurses' role, nurses, um, you know, uh, throughout history, they play a key role in recognizing and responding to emerging disease threats across the care continuum. Paul and Kashin use both document and in-depth content analysis methodologies in their research to, ex to examine media portrayals of nurses' role during the Western Africa um, Ebola epidemic. And they found out that, uh, you know, nurses played a very important role um, during that, um, uh, um, the, the Ebola epidemic. In 2011, the International Council of Nurses issued a position statement related to reducing travel-related communicable diseases transmission. And in that position statement, the International Council of Nursing supports the position that nurses are uniquely positioned to assist government and other agencies to implement and evaluate communicable diseases outbreak and prevention and response. In other words, and it highlights the importance of the preventive role of the nurse um, in order to help um, uh, promote uh, uh, all issues around public health uh, prevention of diseases and uh, education amongst um, uh, citizens in the various countries. Additionally, Edmondson and R stated that nurses have valuable expertise, competencies, and grassroots perspectives to impact the prevention, spread, and management on infectious diseases outbreak. They are positioned to, for important roles in care delivery, education, leadership, and policy making to influence population health outcomes. Nurses in roles across healthcare systems and community settings are well positioned to, to assess individual communities and populations, advocate for justice and equality, and partner with legislators and interprofessional leaders to identify, implement, and evaluate it, a strength-based approach that engages communities and addressing local, national, and global health issues. Globalization and global health issues. Global health is relevant to the theme of practicing effectively, which states that nurses must keep their knowledge and skills up to date. The code states that nurses must recognize diversity and consider cultural sensitivities to better understand and respond to people's personal uh, and health needs. It is therefore important for developing cultural competence and being culturally sensitive, which closely relate to globalization and global health issues. In other words, nurses must practice transcultural nursing. They have to recognize that each person that they come across to in the healthcare center comes in with their 
principles, with their values, with their religion, with their beliefs, with their spirituality. And that's how we should face them in order to ensure that the care that we plan for them is based and on their on their on their values and it does not um affect or uh, um disrespect their dignity and their um and their ethical um cultural uh, code the coach said that medicine must pay special attention to promoting well-being, preventing ill health, and meeting the challenge in health and care needs of people during all life stages. Globalization and global health have had significant effects on illness and healthcare, and nurses in all centers should consider these issues to enhance the care they provide. Global health has led to, to a redefinition of the scope of nursing practice. Since nurses and midwives provide up to 80% of primary healthcare worldwide, they are best placed to offer critically needed, innovative solutions to worldwide health challenges. It's also important to recognize the effect of globalization, not only on nursing practice, but also on nurses as individuals. Many nurses come from a range of social backgrounds, cultures, and countries. They are forced the way they nurse and their expectations of nurses are equally diverse. All nurses should understand the cost of globalization and global health and should be aware of the positive and negative effects of globalization on health. Nurses should have an understanding of what it means to practice in global health context and the opportunities and threats to health that may result from this. This will enable nurses to use their knowledge to improve global health in their local practice. I hope this um, presentation has helped you to understand all these emerging health issues that are um, affecting us um, global-wide and also um, the issues that uh, nursing can play um, a pivotal and important role in tackling all these um, health problems and inequalities around the world. Thank you very much for being with me. Thank you.